Maybe Jay and Silent Bob could be characters. Jay and Silent Bob are like C-3PO and R2-D2. They've been here since the first movie, which was the last time they were cool. But they've been with the franchise so long, they still give them cameos and put them on the lunchboxes. Snoochie booches! First thing out of the gate is, oh my God, how freaking sad is Clerks 3? I know. <laughs> um, I was I know, I was crying reading the script, yeah. Um, was this something you thought this franchise could sort of pull off this type of heartfelt sentiment or were you kind of taken aback by it like I was? No, I, well, you know what? I, I was definitely surprised, but you know, at the same time, not because Kevin's always controversial. So of course he would do something so controversial. This originated with such a touchstone of a film that was just so special and so groundbreaking. And at, you know, just that the dawning of independent film and like the resonance that it had then and the pivot that he took with the second film. It's yeah. such a perfect, brilliant sort of like escalation of his storytelling abilities and his talent as a filmmaker and going between black and white and color and the ability to make a film that encapsulates both of those two, which are such similar but dissimilar films, I just thought was really powerful and remarkable. It's a surprising film, but like one that I'm glad Kevin's earned the ability to make, right? Yeah, you know, and yeah. take us all along on the way with, like it's so self-referential, but like he can get away with it because he's referring to something, not just that he knows. It's not like a personal inside joke. Like right. these are all things we were there all along the way with him on. It's 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 just so it's, it's, it's special. And part of that has been him surviving this Widowmaker heart attack where in which had he not, we never would have had this movie because he had a version of this that he never did years ago and shelved. So it's like, there's just so much magic, I think, and power to, to the to this film and like that cinema verite, like docu-drama kind of way that's just so particular to Kevin and, you know, just really works. Yeah. What do the original Clerks mean to you in the 90s as somebody who got a big break in 90s independent cinema? Like, what would, what did that film allow others to do? I mean, you just, you know, he did this awesome film on a super low budget with just friends. The protagonists are these folks that are often marginalized background characters, you know, like they're background characters in our own personal lives. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then we were made into background characters because we've all been to a bodega, a convenience store, a video store. Some, so we've interacted with a clerk of some kind. So we can get what that slice of life moment is. We can relate to it immediately. That idea of hyper-focusing on it as a film and just these characters debating, just talking to each other is just so special. And, you know, we just went in the, in the, in the era of big studio movies, we were never gonna see that. Um, and so it was just like, it was a cool thing to be like, if you've got a camera and you've got some friends, go shoot something. And like, you know, and, and you know, now he's such a filmmaker that he can just shoot something um, that also is heartbreaking and has a, a huge intense sort of humanity behind it. But that was always kind of, the texture of that was always there because the tone of his film, the idea of his film was just so special. And it's been nice to celebrate those mundane moments with him all this time, Yeah, you know? Um, it's uh, um, basically, you uh, uh, since Clerks 2, you've gone on to be in Marvel and Star Wars and other big cinematic universes. Can you talk mm -hmm. just a little bit about how he's a pioneer of the, a shared universe with the viewer skewerverse, the movies verse sort of like, and how he kind of kicked that all off. Yeah, I mean, I always give him credit, you know, and when I get told that I'm in all these universes, I always make sure to add the VSQ. I think that's important. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, he's re he's really created his whole microcosmic, you know, kind of world. And that's just not, that's not a given, you know? Like, I, I think he's done something really special. He was doing it way in advance and, you know, we talk about that. I mean, I, I, I've been doing a lot of comic related films and projects for a long time since before my agents and my manager even knew what I was so excited about. And I was like, oh, this is going to be really special. It's Frank Miller. Just trust me. It's going to be great. <laughs> you know, like now it's like, duh. But, you know, this is pre 300, you know, like right. and the idea of like a fanboy like Kevin, um, you know, and, and just sort of that whole world that he kind of 
brought into the mainstream culture is just is is so cool and so special and, and such a huge part of the industry now. But I think is again one of the reasons why you love him so much because you just you know he's he's important. He's important to the whole process. Um, yeah. yeah. When uh, when you're on set, um, like starting with Clerks two and then Jay and Silent Bob reboot and now this movie, do you guys just fan out about projects together, or even ones that you're in? Oh you yeah, know, he's, like he's know, like, such a fanboy. He's such a fanboy. It's so good that everyone gets to share about the things that they're working on and producing and the fact, you know, he, he wrote me in this as like a force ghost, which of course he didn't have the budget for. He really tricked me there. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's so cool. Like he didn't know when he was casting me all those years ago and talking about Star Wars that I'd be in Star Wars all those years later. And he loves that stuff. Like he's the biggest fan on that. Like. He tries to get information out of me all the time. I don't take the bait. I was going to ask. It's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, sweet. Speaking of Force Ghost, your character, you know, is a sad part of this film, but also kind of an uplifting, mm. joyful part of the film. And, and how yeah. did you approach that balance? I mean, you just got to be honest and raw about it. You know what I mean? And I think <clears throat> I didn't, I keep saying I, I didn't have to do the emotional lifting on this. You know, as devastated as I was when I read the script and I knew people would be when they watched the storytelling. I got to just be, well, take on the challenge of having that same charm of Becky in a new iteration. And, you know, I'm glad I, I fit into most of the clothes. I still have the glasses, you know, like we did, I did, I did my best impression of this awesome character that I love so much and was so grateful to be able to explore again. Um, and I got to witness Brian, like as an amazing actor, just really, do the heavy lifting emotionally about where those characters actually are at this time. You know, I didn't, I didn't really have to do that. I got to be Gandalf, you know? <laughs> um, and, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 it was just really cool. You know, I did not see that coming. Um, but I'm glad for it because it was, a, you know, it's an important reflection point. You know, I think I'm 43, we're losing people, you know, it's, um, you know, you hurt yourself sleeping. You know, you, life changes, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you start changing and it's it's great to have these reflection points and a reminder of, of appreciating the people that you're sharing this crazy wild experience called life with, you know. <laughs>